Chapter two. I thought that completing the first chapter would be a triumph. Far from it, the vicar was upset. I've apparently made the whole thing sound rather like some sort of spy thriller. Richard Bremond did not really come down and hire the vicar as a private eye. Well, of course he frigging didn't, but I'm trying to turn it into who'd done it. Isn't that what I'm meant to be doing? Read my lips. Rule one, absolutely no retakes. These blogs are taking long enough as it is. While I'm here, I've just realised that I've forgotten to mention our final morning at Real World. Now, hey, it may have nothing to do with the plot, but nothing is going to make me miss this out. That was the day that I ceased to be simple Punk Sanderson and became Punk Sanderson, the Naked Assistant, with capital letters. It was like this. I invited Siobhan through the studio to look at my videos. We have a drink and then... Yeah, well then, I can't remember a damn thing. But, believe me, anyone at Real World will tell you about the day when Punk Sanderson woke up stark naked on the studio floor with his manhood under threat from an industrial strength vacuum cleaner and his memory completely obliterated. Now, I'd love to claim that the cleaner was waking me up after a night of great sex with Siobhan, but who knows? I certainly don't. And Siobhan claims she doesn't either, although I've got my suspicions. I know something went on. I've smelt my watts yet and it... Never you mind. Let's just say that that was the night I got to live the rock and roll life. It was also, unfortunately, the night that someone nicked the vicar's video camera. So whatever happened, it cost me over 500 quid. And if I can't remember it, it can't altogether have been worth it. On the good side, though, the video of Diva wasn't in the camera, so I've still got that. www.bigfuckingpipedreams.com lives to fight another day. Onward and upward, I say. So, we left Real World about a week after the first meeting with Bremore. The vicar had spoken with his wife and apparently got approval for an extended holiday working with Billy G. Oh, I could rant about the vicar's mysterious wife, but now is not the time. We went up to London in the vicar's horribly boring, very sensible, elderly Volvo estate. Yeah, I know. A Ferrari would have been far cooler. To stay on his boat, the Betsy, a large, very unsensible, 38-foot-long concrete monstrosity which he'd built himself long before I knew him. See if you can take the CD that Billy G mimed to on the National Lottery, load it into the digital editor without losing your underpants, he joked once we got on board. I was getting tired of these jokes about naked engineers. It's bad enough having your face exposed every day without adding the dubious pleasure of your groin. I took the CD and recorded it into the computer. The waveform of the music came up on screen. It is most unlikely that this will tell us anything, he warned. It would be a simple matter for anyone to buy the single, load it into a computer, and simply switch the song around on a digital editor. I imagine virtually anyone with a home studio could have done it. After the fake CD, I loaded in a copy of Billy G's real CD. My guilt got the better of me. I fessed up to the fact that I already owned a copy. In fact, who am I trying to kid? I had four with different covers, plus an exclusive remix from iTunes. Not the sort of thing you'd admit down the pub, where I'm more of a, a Muse or a Kaiser Chiefs man, but, you know, with a bit of the Godfathers like the jam thrown in for good measure. But she hails from Manchester, always a good thing, make great music, and, well, the poster of her and the python. If I wasn't such a calm, sensible, restrained individual, I would have that nailed up on the ceiling above my bed. Perhaps is not the time for my private obsessions to come out. Let us see how we are doing, my dear punk. The vicar took the mouse from me and looked at the two versions of the song that were now laid out one above the other on the 20-inch flat screen monitor. Oh, a bit like this one here. All of these bits are absolutely identical. The vicar slowly scrolled through the song, starting with the introduction and then the first two verses. Exactly the same, the beautiful voice of your beloved Billy G warbling away as nature intended. Someone has simply taken the real CD and copied it. Careful, I think your socks are trying to escape, your clothes are trying to get away again. He carried on scrolling through the song until he came to a point where the two waveforms were different. And this is where they started to alter the song. He double-clicked on the version of the song at the top of the screen and the music started to play. Billy G was singing the third verse of her song. He stopped the music and double-clicked at the same point on the fake version on the bottom of the screen. Rather than the third verse, she was singing the first verse. Hardly the work of a criminal mastermind, he chuckled. That will be the point where her luscious lips became rather less than synchronous on the lottery. They have simply taken the first verse and put it where the third verse should be, as easy as moving a paragraph around on a word processor. So, let us try. Now, the vicar may love playing with his computer, but he's nowhere near as quick as I am. Uh, yeah, that's my job. He slapped me away, and I twitched silently as he took an ice age to perform the ten-second task um, uh, of copying their edit. Good, he sat back proudly. My edited version of this verse is now just the same as theirs. What other delights await us, I wonder? Is there nothing more challenging? He carried on listening to the fake version. 
where I expected the third chorus, Billy Dee, was singing the words of the first chorus. They put, and finally, they have messed it around by switching the choruses at the end. He smiled smugly at his own brilliance. So, let us do the same. He slowly made the edit, saying quietly to himself, Eternity is a dreadful thought. I mean, Mr. Stoppard, when is it going to end? Quite appropriate, given the speed of his editing. As he finished, his eyes lit up with that demonic look of his. Finally, my naked assistant, we have something to attract our interest. He held a triumphant fist in the air. My edit, perfect though it is, does not match theirs. The mellifluous tones of Miss G are the same, but the backing music is different. Do those words happen anywhere else in the song? I read through the lyrics, which were printed on the CD booklet. Don't touch what you can't afford. Words and music by Edward Broom. No, definitely not. The, the, the words to the chorus change every time. Why? Because, if you are right, my fine friend, then the number of possible suspects has been cut from just about everyone in the known universe to a very much smaller, more identifiable group. Well, you can tell that just from the editor, I asked. Let me enlighten you. On the real CD, Billy G can be heard singing those words only once, in the first chorus over the lush keyboard backing, correct? Well, yes, I nodded. On the fake CD, they have reused those words at the end of the song to confuse her, but the backing music is totally different. To do that, you would need to obtain a recording of her voice on its own and then recombine it with the music. We have therefore, in a matter of five minutes, reduced the possible suspects from any Tom, Dick or Harry who, like your good self, was misguided enough to purchase a copy of the CD to a very much smaller band of people who, unlike yourself, would have access to the original tapes. We have, in fact, successfully eliminated you from our inquiries. A good thing, too, as I am not sure that I would have been willing to put up bail for you. No. I suspect that you and all her fans are in the clear, and that this will prove to be what your TV detective would call an inside job. He smiled in a self-satisfied way and leaned back on the chair. I almost thought he was going to put his feet up on the table. All this, and we still have not had time to sample that excellent pot of Earl Grey tea that I have skillfully prepared in a warm pot with fine bone china cups. Shall I play, Mother? He said, picking up the teapot. What the fuck do they know? Have they had three fucking million selling records in the last year? All they have to do is sign a fucking piece of paper and they will make more fucking money than even they can fucking add up. And I get to make a fucking great record. Well, that's how it's done, I said, keen to show that I spotted it so quickly. Someone's stolen the multi-track tape. 